Welcome to the Caltex Theatre, a full hour of dramatic entertainment broadcast over a nationwide network of stations throughout Australia. The Caltex Theatre is brought to you by Caltex Oil, marketers of over a thousand outstanding petroleum products, in association with Caltex dealers and distributors everywhere. Tonight in the Caltex Theatre, you will hear the tender story of a teenaged girl named Bobby, who learned that even a tomboy can grow into a charming young woman. Starring in Bobby, you will hear Amber May Cecil. Your producer, Cressick Jenkinson. <laughs> The Caltex Theatre presents Bobby, Act One. Sure. Mrs. Martin, the window in my room. You're having trouble with the window in your room, Mrs. Perry. Well, I told you, the catch is loose. It keeps banging. Well, it's not that you can hear it. All the things you can't hear would it suit you not to. Bang, bang, bang. That's how it goes. Oh, I'll, I'll get Bobby to fix it for you. Bobby! Okay, okay. Didn't Bobby hear you the other times you called? She's coming, Mrs. Perry. She just said she was coming. It'll be nice to have a silent window, not one that goes bang, bang, bang. Ah, oh, bang, bang, bang. Here I am, Mom. Oh, oh, Bobby. What's the matter? Uh, nothing, just nothing. Well, I, I guess I don't look all that smart, but there's nothing I can do about it. I tried a scarf around my neck and I, well, I couldn't be bothered with it. It's not your appearance I'm unhappy about. Well, what is it? Oh, it's nothing. It's, well, go ahead. Play tennis. Oh, Mom, it's Saturday. You said that... I thought you might help me. So I see. Oh, Bobby, what do you think? I forgot to put in the ad, room for a lady. I don't know how I happened to leave that out. It's the first time that I've ever made that mistake. But he was such a nice young man, I just couldn't resist letting him have the room. Well, what do you want me to do? It's two o'clock and you said... No, all right. All right. Go ahead. Oh, no, Mom. I'll do it. Just tell me. The new tenant. He wants that extra chest of drawers out at a desk in. Uh, that little one down in the basement. He said that would do fine. Okay. And you better take the dust off it before you bring it up. Well, if Sam comes, you to... Oh. Sam! Come, come on in! Bobby, please. Hey, look, we won't get a caught if we don't... Oh, hello, Mrs. Martin. Sam, I have a new tenant coming in this afternoon, and there's something that has to be done. Now, Bobby, be sure and get the dust off good now before you bring it up. Well, Sam, well, just be a minute. Yeah, I'll help you. Why don't you go on over and line up a court? I'll meet you over there. Well, let me help you. No, it's light. It's nothing. You go on. Bobby's as strong as a horse. Ah, look at me. Strong as a horse. <laughs> I've always been so frail. Yeah, you told me. And I never had a son, so I... Just had to lean on Bobby all these years. Yeah, well... Uh... She's my little man. That's what she is. My little man. Yeah. I hardly ever think of her as a daughter. Well, you've only got to look at her room. All those sport pictures, athletic pennants. It's a boy's room, that's what it is. And she's much more at home in old sneakers than... Uh, Mrs. Martin, if I'm going to get a court for our tennis game... Oh, uh, Sam, you ought to come over sometime and spend the evening. I like to sit in the living room after dinner and have coffee and dessert and uh, listen to the radio program. It, Bobby and I are always glad for some company. Well, thanks, but... It's so nice to have a young man in the house. Oh, you know the funniest thing happened. I forgot to put in the ad lady. And who do you think I rented the top floor to? A man. 
<laughs> Can you imagine making a mistake like that after all these years? Oh, but he seems very nice. Of course, he's just temporary. I, uh, I don't think he knows anyone in New York. I tell you, Sam, why don't we all get together sometime and make a real party? Well, that's very nice of you, Mrs. Martin. Uh, maybe sometime, Sam, but right for now... for gosh I... sakes, haven't you gone yet? I was just leaving. Hey, Bobby, let me carry oh, that. Oh, for gosh sakes, go on. They'll be lined up six deep. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Martin. Oh, Sam, it, it's Saturday night, and there's good music Saturday night. So if you'd like to come over and have some dessert, Willis, I'm going to bake uh, some pie. You like lemon chiffon? Well, thanks, Mrs. Martin, but I, I've got some plans. Oh, that's too bad. Well, sometime soon. Sure. Thanks. Goodbye. Bobby! Bobby! Yes! You can move that chest of drawers into Linda's room. That cousin of yours, she's got more clothes than she knows what to do with. The chest of drawers, Bobby! Okay, okay! Come on in. Thank you. Well, I've been baking pies out in the kitchen. I hope you like lemon chiffon. Oh, I should have given you your key right away. <sighs> I have uh, quite a bit of baggage. Oh, my. You have brought a lot of things. May I go up to my room? For two weeks. Oh, sir, three of these are saddle cases. Well, I'll start taking these upstairs. Uh, Bobby should be back pretty soon. Uh, Bobby's my daughter. She's just 18. Uh, she's been out playing tennis. Oh, you know what children are. I'm sorry I can't help you, but uh, I just haven't the strength. Oh, I can manage all right, thanks. Sample cases, you say? Yeah, I represent a small manufacturer in Battle Creek, but we want to build this into something big. It's uh, sporting goods. Well, I certainly wish you luck. Thank you. I think I'm going to like the work when I get used to it. Uh, we'll have some pie and coffee in the living room after dinner. Maybe we could all sit around and, and talk a while. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I uh, just had something to eat, and uh, I do want to write to my wife. She's never been to New York. Oh, oh, I, I see. Or maybe later in the evening? Well, thanks, but... Uh... <laughs> Make yourself right at home up there, and if you need anything... Thanks very much. Even if it's late, do feel free to come down. Uh, Mr. Richard? Come in, Sam. Oh. Yes, sure. Uh, Bobby, those are Mr. Richard's bags. Now, when are you going upstairs? Okay, Mom, okay. And, Bobby, you didn't do anything at all about that garbage before you went out this afternoon. Okay. Bobby, you did all right today for crying out. I did, Stinky. But why don't you just relax and enjoy the tennis? What are you trying to prove? I don't get enough time to practice. Maybe twice a week for a couple of hours. Look, I just nosed you out six four six three ten eight. Plenty of guys I know. Plenty of it's... guys. It's just a game. Yeah, I feel like bowling tonight. You want to bowl tonight? Well, I've uh, sort of got a date. It's this girl's birthday, and okay. she wants to go to a nightclub. A nightclub? Well, I mean, it's her birthday, oh, and smoky old places. Well, look, there's something in life besides playing games. Oh, I'd like to see you, Bobby. I can beat you at bowling. Why do you have to beat me? Look, I work all week. I like to relax a little on a weekend. You think I don't work? This place, four floors. Okay. Okay. Maybe you've got some other kind of job somewhere. Then you could hire somebody. What kind of job? Sit in an office all day like Cousin Linda, pecking at a typewriter? I just explode. Or cooped up behind a counter like you. Well, it's not ideal, but what's wrong with it? Well, Linda can do it. You can do it, but I can't. I'm just... I'm too restless, and I, I don't know. In a couple of years, I'll have enough money to go to college. Or we'll get married, or something. Get married? What's wrong with that? No, I, I could... Never could sit very long, even in school. Now, what's that got to do well, with... Well, don't tell me to get some crummy job, that's all, in some crummy office. I'd like to see you, Bobby. See me? Well, I just said you want to bowl tonight. 
Oh, you don't have to look at me like that, sitting around in some stinking nightclub. It's this girl's birthday. She asked me. Well, have a good time. Uh, sure. You want to play tennis next Saturday afternoon? Okay. I'll see you. Okay. I'll see you. Hey, I've got that. What? Oh. Those bags, you just leave them. You must be Bobby. Oh, you rented the room on the top floor. Yeah, I'm Alan Richards. Hi. Hi. You've got a handshake like a football. Oh, why not? I'll take one of your bags anyway. Oh, oh gosh, it weighs a lot. What have you got in it, bricks? Uh, sporting goods samples. Clubs, balls, rackets, the works. No kidding. Do, do you have bowling shoes? I have bowling shoes. Oh, could, could I see them? Oh, brother, do I need new bowling shoes? Well, I only sell wholesale, but come on upstairs. You might as well look them over. It's a brand new line. Hey, look at you. You're in pretty good shape the way you toss that bag around. Oh, I carried the bed up here from the basement. Of course, it comes apart. It does? I mean, it's built in sections. You knock it apart with a hammer. I see. Is it locked? Locked? Oh, uh, the bag. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot you wanted to see the bowling shoes. Here. Gee, both look all right. Uh, I sort of felt like bowling tonight. Would you like to go bowling tonight? Your second choice. Even so, I'm honored. But I'm afraid I'm not much of an athlete. I just sell these items. Or hope to. I don't use them personally. You don't? Uh, what do you do, Bobby, when you're not bowling or uh, toting beds up four flights? What do you mean? For relaxation. Uh, I don't know. Nothing much. Just full run, I guess. Well, I better go help Mom. Hi, Linda. I have to go help Mom. I just thought I'd come in and say hello. Well, stick around a minute. You can zip me up. You like this mouth I'm putting on, or do you like this one better in Harper's Bazaar? They're both okay, I guess. Sometimes I wonder if he's worth it. My mouth's wrong, my nose is wrong. You know what he said last night? I ought to have my nose done. Your nose done? Sure, why not? Your nose is too long or too flat, we just remodel it for you. Oh, my gosh, you wouldn't. You ever been in love? No. Then don't talk. We have a new tenant. Yeah. Oh, El Morocco, El Morocco. I think Larry would drop dead if he didn't sit at the same table every night. He sells sporting goods, bowling shoes and stuff. He? I don't know what law says I have to make myself over. Larry can take my mouth or leave it alone. What does he look like? Oh, the new tenant. Oh, well, he's tall and dark hair. He has very clean-looking teeth. Uh, he's pretty friendly. I is he eating here? I don't know. I guess so. Do you want to zip me up? I'm sure. I um, don't suppose you'd want a bowl tonight. Bowl? In this dress, with this mouth? Are you kidding? Okay. Well, see so you dinner, huh? Are you eating with us? Why not? I'd pay for it. Oh, sure, I'll tell Mom we put a place. You haven't eaten with us for a long time. For once, I think I'll keep Mr. Larry Myers waiting. Let him drink four martinis waiting for me. Linda. What, honey? Are you going to get married? Not if I don't play it smarter, I'm not. Why? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering. I've been wondering for three years. Three years? The nerve of that guy! Well, I guess I better go help Mom with the supper. It's almost six. Are you sure Linda's coming down? She said she was. Mrs. Perry! Oh, she can't hear you. Mrs. Perry! Huh? 
Would you care to go bowling this evening, Mrs. Perry? You're my last hope. Don't tease her, Bobby. Mrs. Perry, we want you to come in tonight to the living room and listen to the music. It, it's Saturday. Music? I can't hear it. I got to get that bathroom scrub. That young fellow left it a mess. Yeah, well, Bobby will do it, Mrs. Perry. Oh, Mom, it's Saturday night. I need to get out or something. I, I don't know. You've been out all afternoon. Well, I'm restless. And Linda oughtn't to say she'd be here for supper and then not come. It isn't courteous. I'm not so sure I approve of a man in this house. Asking for trouble. He's a nice young man, I can tell. With two young girls in the house. Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. Oh. Come on and sit down. Oh, I'll get you some hot rolls, Linda. Oh, well, no. No, I, I, I can't stay but a minute. Oh, you said you were going to eat with us. We're not through yet. No, I um, I have to meet Larry at, at, at El Morocco. And, Julia, I hear you have a new boarder. Oh, yes, he's a very nice young man. Maybe we can all spend some evening together. I'd be glad to, Aunt Julia. Just let me know when. Hmm. Guess I'll go clean the bathroom. Oh, we've got lemon chiffon pie for dessert. Don't you want any? No. Oh, well, I don't know. Save me a piece. Where's the scrub stuff? It's all up there. Now you know that. Okay. What is the matter with that girl? What's the dessert? Oh, for heaven's sake, Mrs. Perry. I wish you'd wear your hearing aid. You're no company at all. Oh, I was just going to get a glass of water. I'm sorry. I was cleaning up the bathroom. Uh, don't rush off. Bobby, I've been thinking about you this evening. Me? Yeah. Does that surprise you? W what were you thinking? Wondering about you. You interest me. You interest me, too. I do? In what way? I can't understand why you're not interested in sports. <laughs> Bobby... Bobby, how old are you? I'll be 18 next month. It's amazing. What's so amazing about that? Never mind. I'm not so innocent, if that's what you mean. Oh, you're not. No, I'm not. I, I've read books. I see. Why aren't you interested in sports? Oh, I'm interested. Very interested. I just don't participate. I, uh, I read books. I guess I, I'd better go. Uh, wait a minute. Don't be afraid of me. I won't hurt you. I'm not afraid of you. I'm probably stronger than you are. Yeah, probably. I won't put it to the test. Well, what, what do you want, then? Well, I don't know. I, I hadn't thought it through. It's my first night in New York. The world is going on without me while I sit in a little room by myself writing letters and speeches about durable bowling shoes. Maybe I'm lonesome. Or just restless. Oh. You sure you don't want to try bowling? No, I don't want to try bowling. Well, what I am doing, I guess, is asking you for a date. What for? Well, I don't know. We could see a movie, hold hands in a nightclub. Now, what's your name? Bobby. No, no, no. Your name. Roberta. All right, Roberta. You and I have a date. It's Saturday night. Uh, go get dressed. I'll go comb my hair. I'll meet you out front in five minutes. You do have a dress, don't you? Oh, sure, I have a dress. I have four or five of them. All right, then. Pick out a pretty one. You mean put it on? I'll, I'll wear a sweater and skirt. A dress, Roberta. Well, where's your lipstick? I, I don't know. It's around somewhere. Twenty minutes, enough for you to get ready? My gosh, yes. All right, twenty minutes, Roberta. Okay, tw twenty minutes. Did you say something? Can't think of anything to say. You... 
Want to go home? Oh. We're night clubbing. We're doing all right. Don't worry about it. I I'm not worrying. How come you've never been in New York before? You've asked me that twice now. Don't worry about it, Roberta. You don't have to make conversation. Somebody ought to. We just sit here. Well, what's wrong with that? We're smoking, we're drinking, we're holding hands. You can't do everything at once, can you? Okay, we're not holding hands. Okay, we'll talk. We'll tell each other the story of our lives, huh? Ladies first. There isn't anything to tell. We'll make up something. Something exciting, I intend to. I... I won a medal for diving when I was a freshman in high school. That's very good. I didn't make that up. It's true. And you said there was nothing to tell? And my mother and I took a trip to Wilmington, Delaware five years ago and my aunt was sick. Uh -huh. It wasn't very exciting, though. It was pretty boring. What are your plans? Well, I used to want to be an all-around athlete like Babe Didrikson, but I never get enough time to practice. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I know. There's always too much time and never enough. Days go so fast, just like that. And when it gets dark and it's too late to do anything, everything slows up and it seems to well, like forever until it's time to go to bed. Sometimes I go to bed real early, 9.30 or 10, just, just to have something to do. Well, what do you think about it? I mean, before you go to sleep. I don't think about anything. Oh, it's too bad. Why is that? Oh, I don't know. It just seems a pity when you're 18 not to think about something nice before you go to sleep. Are you married? Yeah. Do you mind? I don't care if you're married or not. Why should I care? Shall I tell you how I happen to be decorated with a purple heart for injuries sustained in action? Sure. Well, we'd captured an empty farmhouse outside St. Lowe. Uh, did you ever drink French wine? No. Uh, well, uh, on the way to the front, I uh, fell out of a jeep and fractured my collarbone. Well, since I was feeling nothing at the time, I was able to make jokes all the way to the hospital, and so I acquired a reputation for courage. Are you making that up? No, Roberta, that's true, every word of it. Shall we go home? Yeah, I guess we'd better. <laughs> Everything's dark. I guess they're all in bed. Will your mother mind you being out so late? Oh, she never pays much attention. Sometimes I go to double features and don't get home till after one. By yourself? Oh, sometimes I go with Mary Olivetti. She lives next door. Well, I had a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Why did you do that? I kiss you. Yes. Oh. Just because you take me out, you think you can kiss me? Uh, Roberta! Oh. oh, boy, you sure do pack a wallop. Some more coffee. I've had enough breakfast. Looks like the young people are sleeping late this morning. Mm, I'd better wake Bobby. That stairway has to be scrubbed. It's filthy. That young man keeps late hours. Twenty minutes of two we got in this morning. Sloshing around in the bathroom at twenty minutes of two in the morning. How you can't hear anything at all at times, and other times you can hear the sound of water clear across the hall. What? That's what I mean. Good morning, Mom. Well. I've never known you to sleep in this way. I was just about to go and wake you. Now, there's that stairway in there. And I just that's... want some coffee, thank you. You catching a cold? No. 
Why, no. You don't eat it. Must mean that you're coming down with something. You don't look very I'm well. I'm all right. I just didn't sleep very much. Hmm. Where'd you go last night? You weren't home when I went to bed. Oh, just out. Just around. I don't like you going out without telling Mom, me. Mom, I'm nearly 18. I thought maybe you'd come in and listen to the music last night and have your pie. I saved your pie for you. Oh, thanks. Rang. It's never very good. Next day it's watery. What time did you get home? I don't know. It must have been pretty late. I didn't go to bed till after midnight. Well, what do you want me to do today? Well, those stairs. They've got to be scrubbed all the way. The rubber mats are muddy. Bobby, you'd better eat some breakfast. Where's the scrub stuff? Where it always is, for heaven's sake, Sidney. Is that young man coming down to breakfast or isn't How he? How should I know? How should I know what he's doing? Bobby! Bobby, where did you go so late last night? Oh, dear. What is happening all of a sudden in this house? You ask me, Mrs. Martin. You've got trouble on your hands. And so the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Caltech's play, Bobby. Anywhere you care to travel, motorists agree. Caltex Butane Boosted is the gasoline made to take better care of your car's performance. Caltex Butane Boosted gasolines give faster starting, smoother acceleration, and more economical running. Next time you fill up, change to Caltex. See if you don't feel a difference. See if your car doesn't respond more readily, tick over more smoothly and steadily. The gasolines designed for today's faster pace, Caltex Butane Boosted gasolines. The Caltex Theatre now presents Amber May Cecil. In Bobby, Act Two. Good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, sorry to put footmarks on the stairs when you've just scrubbed them. Oh, that's all right. Uh, well, uh, I'd uh, better be going. Hello. Oh, hello. You must be the new tenant. I'm Linda Lyons. I live here, too. Alan Richards. How do you do? How do you do? Will you excuse me now? He's cute. You're just getting in, Linda. What a thing to suggest. Well, you have the same dress on as last night. Well, since you put it that way. But don't get any wrong ideas. Larry and I, we've been driving all night. We drove to Virginia to get married. To get married? I said, marry me or else. I don't know what came over me, but that's just what I said. Right in the middle of a stake that thick at El Morocco. I must have shocked him out of his senses because he said... All right, you asked for it and dragged me off without dessert even. Well, did you? No. Where's Aunt Julia? I don't want her to see me like this. In the kitchen. Why didn't you? Because I didn't like his attitude. His attitude? As if he was going through with it just to spite me. After all these years, I thought if I ever got that close to marrying that guy, I'd jump at the chance, but I just couldn't go through with it. I must be nuts. Oh, you're a lucky kid. You don't fall in love. Keep your mind on bowling. That's my advice. That new tenant is very attractive. The new tenant? But I suppose he's married. Practically everybody is. Oh, but 
I wake up, I'll probably hate myself. feels so funny, like I, I, I don't know. Oh, oh, Mr. Richard. Good evening, Miss Martin. I've been so worried you, you didn't have your breakfast or your dinner. I thought I'd see a little of the city. And my niece Linda finally came in and had dinner with us tonight, and... We had a real nice dinner. Oh, sorry, I missed the occasion. I hope I didn't inconvenience you. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, Mr. Richards, but we planned to all sit in the living room and have our dessert, and then everybody had something else they had to do, so here I am all by myself. Would you like to come in and sit down for a while? I'd be delighted. Well, oh... Well, well... Shall we go in? Yes, yes, of course. Come in, Mr. Richards. Thank you. Oh, sit down there. That chair was a favorite of my husband. It's uh, very comfortable. Mm. He's been dead almost 13 years. It doesn't seem possible. 13 years. That's a long time. Yes, it is. Well... Is that his picture? Oh, yes. It doesn't do him justice, though. Pictures seldom do. Oh, isn't that true? And there I am, the other picture. Can you believe it? You haven't changed so much. Oh, goodness. You don't know. I'm middle-aged, Mr. Richards. Sometimes I, I just can't believe it. I, I look at myself in the mirror and I... Did you really mean that? I really did. Would you like some pie? Oh, uh, no, 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 thanks. Well, we ate all the ice cream, but maybe you'd like some coffee. It wouldn't take a minute. I'm perfectly happy, Mrs. Martin. You are? Well, so am I. I don't know when I've had such a nice talk. People are all so busy these days. My daughter Bobby's around most of the time in the evening, but you know, it's, it's hard to talk. I, I can't believe that you think I haven't changed since that picture. Uh, your daughter is very young. It's hard for a young person to talk. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without Bobby. She's just had to be the man of the house all these years. <sighs> she was out late last night. I'm afraid that was my fault, Mrs. Martin. Your fault? I was restless, and I think she was, too. We went somewhere and talked until rather late. But, but you're married. Yeah, I'm happily married, if that's what you're worried about. My niece, Linda, she was very disappointed tonight. Uh, she's about your age, and... Well, she's different to Bobby. No, no, not so different, I imagine. She's older. Everybody she's... wants the same thing, don't they? Somebody to talk to? I don't know what she wants. But my daughter, she... She's not a bit like me. Don't be too sure. Uh, good night, Mrs. Martin. I've enjoyed our conversation. But, but she's not a bit like me. Isn't she, Mrs. Martin? I wonder. Oh, it's you. Oh, come on in, Roberta. Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> Excuse the look of the room. I'm uh, not very neat, I'm afraid. You look very nice, Roberta. That scarf, it matches your eyes. You have very pretty eyes, you know. Did I mention that last night? No. <laughs> Did you want to talk to me, Roberta? Yes. I'm sorry I slugged you. <laughs> I guess I asked for it. Oh, no, you didn't. Would, would you do it again? What? Would you kiss me again? Oh, uh, well, uh... Please, I... I want to hurt you. <laughs> I'd love to. 
Oh, no. N not on the cheek. The way you did last night. Uh, Please. Look, you, you, you'd, you'd better go, Roberta. Uh, Roberta. Don't be sorry. Whatever you do, don't be sorry. I'm not sorry. Neither am I. You're very sweet, and don't you ever forget it. Don't ever forget it. I feel much better. You want to talk about it? No. Yeah, maybe you're right. There are some things you just can't talk about. Could we have another date sometime? Of course. Next Saturday night? Next Saturday night. <sighs> Thank you. Good night, Roberta. <laughs> Very well, Mrs. Perry, very well. I've heard what you have to say. But if you'll just do me one favor, if you'll just let me talk to Bobby alone first. I don't mind if you talk to her. Breakfast isn't ready anyway. It is ready. But if you'll just let me have a minute. Oh, oh what's the use of talking? Good morning, Mom. Oh, good morning, Bobby. Sit down and pour yourself some coffee. You're all dressed up. No. <laughs> This little thing. You don't usually wear a dress. I, uh, I knocked on your door last night. You were asleep. I wasn't asleep. The door was locked. I had some thinking to do. Yes? Well, uh, I thought we might talk a while, but your door was locked and you didn't answer it. I thought we might talk now, before Mrs. Perry comes in. What about Oh, oh, just talk. Mrs. Perry says you were in Mr. Richard's room last night. Oh, yes, I was. Did anything happen? I, I mean... No. Well, plenty happened, but... Oh, look, Mama, I, I don't want to talk about it. Do, do you mind? There are some things you just can't talk about. Not even with your own mother? No... We never have talked about things. I just never... Well, you're almost 18, and that's almost a woman. And I've never... Oh, my goodness. I, I was going steady with your father when I was 19. It... But it just never struck me that you would ever... Go on, Mom. Well, you're so different. I, I mean, you've just never seemed to have been interested in that sort of thing, and that... Oh, Bobby. Bobby, I'm so worried. Did he kiss you much? What? Who? My father. Bobby! Oh, dear. He's just going to have to move, that's all. He seems such a nice young man. He's just going to have to move. Your father and I were going steady. I'll go do the washing. But you, you haven't had I your I don't breath. want any. And just don't worry about me, Mom. Bobby! Oh, dear. Well, did you talk to her? Sit down, Mrs. Perry. I'll get your breakfast. Just keep that young man around, putting temptation in her path. <laughs> You'll see. Mrs. Perry, shut up. No need to shout, Mrs. Martin. And there's that young man going out now, if you want to see him. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, Mr. Richards. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Martin. I was just going to see a man at Macy's. Wish me luck. Oh, could I talk to you for a moment? Uh, well, I... It's very important. All right. It's just that I... Mr. Richards, I, I know you're a happily married man, but Bobby, my daughter, Mrs. Perry saw her come out of your room last night. I see. Late. No, not so late. But in your room... I always forget how old... Or that she's as old as she is. Yeah, I understand, Mrs. Martin. She, she might. When I was her age, I was going steady, but I was planning to get married. Mrs. Martin, 
Your daughter is a very lovely young woman. She is? Well, I mean, I know she is. But she's so young, and you're a married man. I, oh, I don't mean that I think you're... Oh, I don't know what to think. It, it's just that there are so many things you forget as you get older. Maybe we should both try to remember them, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh, hi. Do you want someone? Yeah, Bobby. Bobby Martin. I'm Sam Platt. I usually meet her here when we play tennis Saturday afternoons. So... I'll go upstairs and call her for you. Well, I usually just stand here in the hall and whistle. It saves time. It does? I'll call Roberta for you, Sam. A who? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. My pleasure. Roberta. Hello. Alan. Please come in. Mm, you look very pretty. Do I? Yeah, I like that dress. Where have you been? I haven't seen you all weekend. Here it is Saturday again. I've been making my mark in the world. I return to Battle Creek as a conquering hero and a very tired one. I don't want you to go back. That's my home, Roberta. I'm not going to think about it. Do you like my mouth? Or do you like this one better in Harper's Bazaar? There's a whole page of them. I like them all. Try them all. Okay. Uh, not now, though. There's uh, somebody downstairs to see you. Me? Young lock in far with a tennis racket. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I better change. I forgot all about Sam. It's Saturday. Yeah, so you just said. I remember tonight was Saturday night. Oh, you haven't forgotten, have you? Uh, no, I hadn't forgotten, but... I thought about it all week. Especially before I go to sleep. Roberta, we'll talk about it later. He's waiting for you. Oh, I wish I didn't have to play tennis. I'd rather just be with you. D do you really like this dress? Very much. It's my best one. I've never worn it before. I was just trying it on to see if it still fits. I'm going to wear it tonight. Uh, Roberta. Oh, Alan. I'm so happy. It's the funniest feeling to be so happy. Roberta. Sam is waiting downstairs. Now, go on. Oh. I don't know why you have to... All right. But I'll have to change. No, you go down just the way you are. Huh? Go on. Why? Because I asked you to. And... Roberta. Yes? Remember, in a week I'll be gone. I'm not going to think about that. Go on. He's waiting for you. I'll see you tonight. Oh, Roberta... Well, hello. May I come in a minute? Sure. I, I have an appointment to have my hair done, but it can wait. A friend of mine thinks I'd look better blonde. You look very nice brunette, Miss Lyons. Linda. Linda? I I'm glad you think that. You know, I didn't think we were ever going to get acquainted. I think we should get acquainted. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Tonight? Martin. Mrs. Martin, can I help you with that cleaner? I'm waiting for Bobby. Oh, no, thank you, Sam. A certain amount of lifting is good for the figure. If you hold your stomach muscles firm, you see? I'm not such a frail old woman by any means. You certainly aren't, Mrs. Hey, get a load of Bobby in that dress. That makeup. Suddenly, my daughter's a woman. Excuse me, Sam. Sam, I'm sorry. I forgot all about... Oh, that's okay. I don't care if we play or not. I, I thought you wanted to play. Oh, I do, but... I don't know. I, I just forgot. I had something else on my mind. Well, that's good. You look nice. You've got shoes on. Regular shoes, I mean, not sneakers like you usually wear. Oh, they're sandals. 
They're new. They feel kind of tight. Well, they look good. You want to go bowling tonight? Oh, I I don't think so, thanks. No? No, Sam. But, but thanks. Well, as I said, I'd just as soon relax on a weekend. If you'd like to do something else. I mean, it's Saturday night. I know. I've got a date. You have? You like this mouth? Well, sure. There's another one I'm going to try before I decide which one I'm wearing. Look, Bobby, you're not mad about last week, are you? It was this girl's birthday, and she asked me to take her somewhere. Did you have a good time? Yeah, okay, I guess. We went to a nightclub. It was pretty smoky, like you said. That's what we did, too. Huh? Alan and I. We went to a movie and a nightclub. That's probably what we'll do tonight. Oh. Who's Alan? You saw him. He lives on the top floor. Oh, that one. He was decorated with a purple heart for injuries sustained in action. He looks kind of old. I don't think he does, not at all. Well, I guess I might as well go. I'm, I'm sorry, Sam. And about the bowling, too. That's okay. I didn't much want to bowl anyway. Well, I haven't given it up exactly. It's just... A, well, it's something else besides playing games. Yeah. I'd like to see you, but... cents, I wouldn't have it done, but I've got the appointment. I might as well try being blonde. What have I got to lose? Blonde or brunette, you look very attractive. Hi, kids. Hello, Linda. Linda, what do you think you'd like to do tonight? Did you ever go to El Morocco? A friend of mine goes there every night, and it might be um, kind of interesting. Okay, it's a deal. Well, I I'll see you later, Alan. Yeah, sure. See you later. Hello, kid. Excuse me. Please excuse me. She's crying. I ought to suck you. Go ahead. It might make me feel better. What did you want to do that for? She said she had a date with you. Linda's a very pretty girl, don't you think? You said you were going with Bobby and you're going to go with her. Her name is Roberta. You like her, don't you? Uh, sure, I like her. Then you should be glad. Have you flipped? Yeah, a little. You know, all my life I've been trying to find where I belonged. I majored in chemistry in college. I've done a lot of things, but they had very little to do with people. All of a sudden, I find out I'm a pretty good salesman. What do you know about that? I think I will suck you. You'd uh, better go upstairs, Sam. I don't like to think of Roberta crying alone. Oh, look, I... It's the first door on the left. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, love of boy, have you learned a lesson. Mr. Richards. <laughs> Greetings, Mrs. Martin. What are you sitting there for? On the stairs. Of all the things... I'm keeping my mouth shut. There's a time for everything, Mrs. Martin. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, you, you just make yourself a... Oh, Mr. Rich. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mr. Martin. Oh, it's you. You okay? Why shouldn't I be okay? Can I come in? If you want to. I'm just putting my sneakers on instead of these. Why shouldn't I be okay? I should have socked him. I wanted to. You don't want to play tennis? Sure, if you do. I better beat you. Okay. I suppose you want to bowl tonight? Tonight? We could go to a nightclub. You, you don't have to bother about me. I'm all right. Crying, crying's for kids. Go ahead. You can cry if you want to. <laughs> Don't let him do this to you, Bobby. He called me Roberta. I hate that name. Oh, look, it's not so bad. I know a girl named Blossom. I hate it. I hate it. You want to play tennis? Look forward all week. I think I will go suck him. He said I had pretty eyes. Well, you have. I have not. Sure you have. Heck, I've always thought you did. You... You didn't ever say so. Well, you were always so... 
For what? I don't know. Trying to beat me. Every time I looked at you, you looked at me like you'd rather be bowling. Everybody always treated me like I was a kid. Like I was a boy, almost. Like all I, I'd want to do anyway was bowl. But he didn't. Sam? What? What were you going to say? Everybody in this house probably knows it by now, so I guess you might as well. He kissed me. He's married. He said that I was very sweet. Well, now are you going to sock him? Well, I don't know. Are you afraid? I weigh more than he does. I socked him. Well, why'd you do that? I don't know. You shouldn't have done that. Why not? Well, he was a pretty nice guy. Oh, I don't know. Yes, he was. That's not what I was saying before. Now we're saying it, though, aren't we? Yeah, I guess so. He was the kind of guy that said what he was thinking. I've always admired that kind of guy. Yes, he was. I never can do that. I don't know why, but I always think one thing, and then I end up saying something else. You're saying what you're thinking now, aren't you? Well, now I am. What? Well, you're just easier to talk to than most people. I mean, now you are. I mean... Well, now you're more human or something. Did I tell you he was decorated with a purple heart for injury sustained in action? Yeah. Yeah, I've always admired that kind of guy. He was... Oh, I don't know. He was nice. He sure was. Well, I guess if we're going to play tennis, we ought to get going. <laughs> They'll be lined up six deep. I'll just comb my hair and put some lipstick on. Yeah, okay. Hey, Bobby. Hmm? Why don't you just put the lipstick on your own mouth instead of like some picture in a magazine? Your mouth's all right. Is it? Sure, it's fine. Is it? Sure, it's fine. Just fine. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm glad. There. My own mouth. No magazine. It's just fine. Okay, let's go. You bring the racket. Yeah. It's a beautiful day outside. Is it? Beautiful. What's the matter? He's down there, sitting on the bottom stair. Yeah, well, that's okay. What's he doing? Looks like he's winding his watch. Oh. Having trouble with your watch? What? Oh. <laughs> no, it's fine. Oh, we decided to play tennis. Good. It's a beautiful day outside, you know that? Have a good game, Bobby. You will have a good time with Linda. Linda? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, see you around, huh? Yeah. See you around. And I'll see you around, too. Absolutely. Come on, Bobby. They'll be lined up six deep. Oh, Bobby. Oh, yes, Mom. Maybe Sam would like to come home to dinner tonight. Tonight? We could all sit in the living room for a while and listen to music together. You want to, Sam? Well, for a while, sure. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. Well, see you later, then. Goodbye, Mr. Richards. Goodbye. It's a beautiful day outside. Yes, it is. Beautiful. So ends our Caltex play, Bobby. In a moment, we will give you tonight's cast and tell you about next week's presentation in the Caltex Theatre. Ladies and gentlemen, the producer of tonight's Caltex play, Cresic Jenkinson. Thank you. Bobby was written by Nada Stokes and adapted for radio by Richard Lane. Starring tonight, you heard... I played Bobby. This was Amber May Cecil. <laughs> the supporting cast was as follows. Mrs. Martin, Neva Carglin, Alan, Leonard Teal, Sam, Graham Hill, Linda, Diana Perryman, 
and Mrs. Perry, Lyndall Barber. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jenkinson. Next week in the Caltex 30, you will hear the story of Frank Crowley, a middle-class man who, after 20 years of marriage with his middle-class wife, Alice, came to realize that he'd missed out on so much that was worth living for and desperately sought to escape from the everyday life that seemed to be closing in on him, sought to find that one little door through which he could slip from frustration and despair into a wonderful new world and the pursuit of happiness. How he learned that running away from destiny is never an answer to the problems we face each day is told in The Little Door. Be listening for this moving drama next week. Remember, too, Yellow Jack and The Bush and the Tree, further outstanding presentations shortly to be heard in the Caltex Theatre. Now this is your compere, Rick Hutton, bidding you good night on behalf of your hosts, Caltex Oil. Marketers of Caltech Super Gasoline and Caltex Gasoline, the world famous RPM 1030 Special Motor Oil and Marfac Lubrication.